Good morning. This is our noonday Eucharist for this midweek. I bid you peace and grace. Bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins, his mercy endureth forever. Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways, to the glory of thy name. Amen. The almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who see us that we have no power of ourselves to help ourselves, keep us both outwardly in our bodies and inwardly in our souls, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading today is from the book of Deuteronomy. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. See, just as the Lord my God has charged me, I now teach you statutes and ordinances for you to observe in the land that you are about to enter and occupy. You must observe them diligently for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call on him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today. But take care and watch yourselves closely so as neither to forget the things your eyes have seen nor to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The word of the Lord. Our psalm for today is Psalm 78, verses 1 through 6. We'll read them together by verse. Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth open in, a in a parable. I will utter dark sayings from of old. Things that we have heard and known, that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord and his might and the wonders that he has done. He established a decree in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel 
which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children. That the next generation might know them, the children yet unborn, and rise up and tell them to their children. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets, Jesus said. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Seated. In a church that I served in Rhode Island, an old colonial church, there were these beautiful uh, sailcloth panels that had been lacquered that hung behind the, uh, the, the main sanctuary area where the altar table was, where we celebrated communion. And in one panel was the, uh, the Nicene Creed in fine gold script on a black background, again, lacquered to the wall. On the other was the, the Lord's Prayer. And in, in the third was the Ten Commandments. Um, the idea behind the Ten Commandments is kind of coherent to the other 603 or so, 605 or so, that are noted in Hebrew Scriptures. The idea that God has given law as the sign of love. I will be your God, you will be my people. Follow these directives and you will have life in me, and I will be with you and for you throughout time. The understanding is that God is the constant, and we are continually responding to God by responding and keeping God's law and God's commandments. The interesting thing that I find in the ratio of those commandments is a few pertain to the way we relate to God, but most of them really direct how we are to be to each other. When Jesus says that I have come not to abolish the law and the prophets, but to fulfill them, he's actively reminding us that we have to be diligent in understanding that what God asks of us pales really in share to what God is seeking from us for God, but instead works out itself in how we are to be with each other. What will life look like as we order ourselves in relationship to each other? And from that, God will discern our adherence, our loyalty, our love, our response to the grace and love of God in that. Oftentimes, we get caught up on the idea that law is about rules to keep rather than relationships to nurture. In this Lenten season, we're reminded again and again that the core of who we are as people of faith is not to be found, if you will, in conduct, in and of, in a space that is a vacuum. We are not apart from all others, reserved to a unique relationship with God. Instead, we are in a corporate and embodied relationship with God as the people of God, as the body of Christ, as the church gathered, first in relationship to each other and figuring out how we can more rightly order that in guidance and love from the spirit and the teachings of Christ, then ultimately having figured out what reconciliation looks like in community, we can then turn our prayers, turn our focus to God and seek to amend those broken relationships that we have with the almighty. The truth is we tend to accumulate those brokennesses in us with each other and with God, much as one would accumulate coins in a jar sitting on a bedstead table as we finish each day, we toss them in and then count them out. But rather than thinking of them as an accumulation, what would it look like if we think of them as treasures of opportunity, opportunities for reconciliation, opportunities for recompense, for giving ourselves over and with intention to each one of those accumulated elements 
so that we can find a more trusting, a more loving, a more right relationship with the other, a more trusting, a more loving, a more right relationship with the Almighty. That is the challenge at its core, not only of a holy Lent, but of a holy life lived in relationship through Jesus Christ in and amongst the life of the church and particularly oriented towards in service and love to God. Amen. I invite you now to join me in the intercessions, the prayers of the people. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Chip, for this gathering, for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of God. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. I ask your prayers for Elizabeth, Rick, Christopher, Felicia, Luann, Katie, Elizabeth, Paul and Nancy, Tara, Kim, Anne-Marie, Rini, Robert, Misty, Stacy, Moira, Alex, the Hockenjoss family, Dylan, Kay, and Michael, Doug and Christy, Larry, Roger, Steve, Maureen, Jeff, Ann, Dora, Jean, Gary, Kay, Rob, Tony, Sonny, Shirley, the Donna Maria family, Guy, Pete, Pat, Marge, Peggy, Piper, Ayla, Lorraine, William, and Phil, and Chris. We pray for peace in Ukraine and everywhere war dominates and causes people to be at risk of violence, depredation, deprivation. May there be peace. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Gracious God, we pray that you may fulfill effectually what we have asked faithfully in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. That's peace. <laughs>
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord, our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth and didst make us in thine own image. And of thy tender mercy didst give thine only son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make. Having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Please join me in the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Father, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. The body and blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory. Amen. Without end. Amen. Look mercifully on this, your family, almighty God, that by your great goodness they may be governed and preserved evermore through Christ our Lord. Mira misericordiosamente a esta tu familia, Dios Todopoderoso, que por tu gran bondad pueda ser gobernada y preservada eternamente. Por Cristo nuestro Señor. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.